Hello, I'm John Minier from AccuSlice. In this video, I'll be showing the production of these small brass bearings for the AccuSlice index system. And I'll be turning these on a Tormac 8L lathe. So now we're ready to start the process of machining these small brass bearings. I have my original drawing, which was set up when the AccuSlice system was designed. So I'll take these dimensions and I'll download these into the Fusion 360 software. And some of the dimensions on this drawing are, are quite critical. For instance, the diameter of this small cylinder here, this cylinder is 0.49997. You know, so it's very, very accurate to within a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. Also, the distance between this front lip and this small groove for the snap ring is quite critical also. So these dimensions have to be programmed in and I need very, very tight tolerances on the lathe when I machine these parts. I machine these parts, starting off, first of all, I machine them out of aluminum just to test out my process to make sure everything worked properly. And then after that was done, then I actually machine them out of brass. <laughs> these brass bushings contain, you know, an inside small hole, which is a quarter inch in diameter, and it's threaded for a left-hand thread screw. So I have a screw here, it's a left-hand thread screw. That screw, you know, goes into this bearing and actually gets glued in place once it's in, inside there. And then what happens is this is then attached to a, another cylinder. This is another bushing, which has that same 20 thread per inch left hand thread. And that gets screwed into this system. And then this entire assembly gets installed into my housing. And once it's installed in a housing, you know, like that, a snap ring would go on to snap in that uh, groove on that uh, brass uh, bearing. And then knobs are put on both sides at the end. This knob on the one side is calibrated a thousand of an inch and this other knob on the other side is just a positioning uh, knob. And then to use this system you just turn this and it's accurate to a thousandth of an inch. And that's how you position your board on the AccuSlice system to you know, index this position. So let me begin by first of all uh, adding these dimensions into the Fusion 360 software generating the drawing for this component and then taking it into the manufacturing portion of Fusion 360 uh, set up the, uh, my uh, uh, tool pass for my tooling and then generate the G-code uh, in the Fusion 360 software. After I generate the, the software in uh, the Fusion 360 software I'll take that uh, G-code to the Tormac 8L lathe and program the uh, lathe for the machining of the part. After my previous video on the Tormac 8L lathe Several viewers asked me to demonstrate how I set up the tool offsets for the various tools used on the Tormac 8L lathe. I was planning on demonstrating these setup routines in this video, however adding this description made this video much too long. Therefore I'll be publishing an additional follow up video after this video in which I'll be demonstrating the actual setting up the tool offsets for the six tools used in this project. I'll be machining these components two ways. First of all I'll machine them with coolant which I normally use for machining. It just gives a better uh, finish on the part using the cooling. But you can't see a lot of detail when I'm using the coolant. So I'll also machine some of these dry so you can actually see the machining operation. After the machining is done, I'll then do a final assembly to produce these indexing systems for the AccuSlice system. Using the conversational programming in Tormax Pathpilot software, was just not practical to develop the G-code for this project. The machining of this small brass bearing was just too complicated to use the conversational programming, and I therefore decided to use the Fusion 360 software. I'm using the Fusion 360 software to both design my uh, index bearing and also to generate the G-code, which I'll take over to the 8L lathe. I began by first of all designing a sketch of the cross-section of my bearing uh, in Fusion 360. Uh, this is the dimension with the center hole, which is both drilled and tap. I have a small groove here for a snap ring, a step-up lip here, and I got my length, my diameters all set, and then I turn this into a round cylinder. And this is my part that I'm going to be making on the Tormac 8L lathe. So next I would go to uh, manufacturing 
and I designed this system. I'm actually using six tools to design this. I need a tool to do the facing and then this outside diameter and then get this inner lip set and then I need another tool to uh, generate this 40,000 inch wide groove. Then I need to drill and tap this center hole and this is left hand thread, 20 threads per inch but it's a left hand thread and the final step is cutting it off. So I generate all those steps in the Fusion 360. This is the Fusion 360 program simulation where I actually can use the various tools to show the actual cutting of the piece and this just makes it more accurate and eliminates mistakes in the machining of the parts. So let's start the machining operation. I use my first tool which is step one to face off the piece. This uses three passes uh, the final pass being a very thin cut to give me a nice smooth surface on the surface of the piece. Use that same tool to turn down the OD of this piece. The overall diameter of this main body is 0.4997. But I have a small lip at the front which is a little bit larger. Now this tool can't do a square corner on that lip so in the next step I'll change the tool to clean up that uh, corners on that front uh, lip. This uses multiple steps to uh, cut the piece down to the final dimensions. Step three, I change the tool to clean up that lip to give me a nice square corner on the uh, front lip. Step four is a grooving tool, 0 0.040 inch diameter, and it gives me my groove for my snap ring. Step five is the drill to drill a hole into the piece, and it's using a pecking drill operation to drill into the piece down to about three quarters of an inch depth. Step six is my left hand tap and that taps into the piece to give me my quarter inch 20 thread per inch left hand thread. Step seven is the final step to cut off the piece and get ready to cut the next piece. And then the final step from the Fusion 360 is to generate the G-code. And then I'll take this G-code, copy it to a memory stick, and then take it over to the ADLA. So I just go up here to uh, Actions, do the post process, give this a, a name. I'm using a Tormac 8L turning uh, PathPilot uh, post processor. And then just post the information to generate the G-code. I can view the G-code. And here's all the uh, various steps with the various tools. So we've got 344 steps to this program. So then I'll copy this to a memory stick and take it over to the uh, Tormac 8 LAs. In my previous video on the Tormac 8 LAs, I had several requests from individuals on how I set my tooling up to get accurate positioning for the job I'm working on. In this particular job, I'll be using six separate tools. Setting up each of these six tools on a Tormac lathe would have been too long for this video. Therefore, I'll be publishing these in a separate follow-up video. In this section of the video, I'll be demonstrating the turning of the brass bearing in real time. I did not speed up this section of the video, but I did cut out the time for the tooling changes. I'm starting out with a brass bar, which is about 12 inches long and 3 fourths of an inch in diameter. And this brass bar has been clamped into a 3 quarter inch 5C collet chuck. This first step uses a left hand facing tool to face off the front face of the brass bar. I face it off in several steps, with the third and final step only turning off 2,000 of an inch off the material to provide for a smooth surface finish. Step 2 uses the same left hand facing tool to turn down the diameter of the brass bearing. The diameter will be turned down on multiple passes, each pass taking off about 5,000 of an inch of material. The lathe is turning at around 2,500 RPM during this operation. The main body will be turned down to 0.497 inch diameter, but there is a 0.626 inch diameter 
by 0 0.063 inch wide lip on the front face of this brass bearing. The left hand facing tool cannot cut this square inside edge on this front lip due to the geometry of this facing tool. This tool therefore just steps down on the left side of this lip. This lip will then be cleaned up with the right hand facing tool in the next step in order to square off this inside corner of this lip. I changed the angle of the camera to better view the following turning operation. I then used a right hand facing tool to clean up the inside corner of the front lip of this brass bearing. And I obtained a perfect right hand inside corner of the lip. Step 4 uses a 0.04 inch wide grooving tool to create the 0.04 inch wide by 0.017 inch deep groove which will be used for a snap ring in the final assembly to hold this brass bearing in place. I'm using a peck motion to cut this groove and I draw the tool for about two seconds when it reaches its final depth to assure an accurate groove. Step 5 uses a 0.201 inch diameter drill to drill a hole 0.800 inches deep on the front face of the bearing. I use a pecking motion to drill this hole to permit the filings to be removed from the drilled hole. I occasionally observed a problem during this step. If the collet was not tightened enough, the pressure of the drill caused the brass bar to move. So it was very important to clamp the collet tightly in the chuck to hold this brass bar tightly. Step 6 uses a 1 quarter inch by 20 thread per inch left hand tap. The lathe software was able to synchronize the movement of this tap in and out of the hole to obtain an accurate tapped hole for the left hand screw which will be inserted into this hole in the final assembly. The final step uses a small grooving tool to cut off the brass bearing from the brass bar. And this is the finished brass bearing. The only cleanup is to remove the small pin on the end where it was cut off on the lathe. The Tormac PC screen displays each step as a part to be a machine. It also displays the G-code as the machining process is continued. This is a handy tool to confirm what step is being processed. I'm just demonstrating a small portion of the actual uh, machining of the part and I did speed this section of the video up five times the actual cutting speed again just for viewing purposes to reduce the, the time of viewing. This section of the video shows the actual machining using coolant. The use of coolant can be a little sloppy but it keeps the parts and tools cleaner and cooler and will provide for the best finishes on all my parts. I did speed up this section of the video by three times the actual machining time for viewing purposes. But I did remove the time for tooling changes from this video. The actual machining time for machining each brass bearing was about six minutes, which includes changing each of the tools six times for each machine part. So about half the total time was just for tooling changes. And this is the finished brass bearing. The only cleanup is to remove the small pin on the end where it was cut off on the lathe.
In this section of the video, I'll show how the various parts are assembled to produce the AccuSlice index assembly. There are a total of 11 parts including screws, washers, snap rings, brass turnings, the housing, an index knob, and the end block, which are used in the AccuSlice index assembly. A 1 quarter inch left hand screw was previously screwed into the brass bearing and glued in place with Loctite. A small amount of fine oil was added to the screw and the screw with the brass bearing is screwed into the larger brass bushing. This assembly is then inserted into the block housing. A wave washer and brass bushing are then added along with a small amount of oil and then is held in place with a snap ring. The index knob which has 1000 inch calibration marks is then attached to the brass bearing and secured in place with a small set screw. The end block is then attached to the opposite end of the assembly and held in place with a small flathead screw. And that completes the assembly of the AccuSlice index assembly. I have a few comments and observations on using this Tormac 8L lathe for machining these small brass uh, index bearings. The total machining time for each of these pieces was about six minutes. That included time not only for machining, but also for tool changing, uh, which wasn't too bad for machining these parts. Uh, tool changing, you know, what is manual is not an automated system. So I had, I had six tools I used for this project, and I had to manually change uh, the uh, tool uh, six times for each of these uh, pieces. That would be the advantage of using the, uh, the 15L with the automatic uh, tool changer. Uh, but of course the 15 L is is cost, more costly. I had one minor issue with the system and that's the, uh, the collet that holds my brass piece. On one or two pieces it actually slipped on because uh, I didn't have the uh, chuck tight enough. But once it was tightened up and tight enough I had no further issues. Uh, but uh, it needs to be t quite tight to hold the pieces. I was getting slippage as I was drilling in. The pressure of the drill going in uh, caused the piece to slide very slightly. I'm glad I changed to the AXA tool post which I described in a previous video. When I first started this project, I was trying to uh, run it with the uh, OXA tool post, and it just wasn't stable enough for doing these long tool holders holding drill bits. But the uh, AXA worked nicely, worked quite nicely, and I got nice uh, drilling cycles and, and tapping cycles on this piece. <clears throat> the system was quite precise in machining these parts. I was trying to machine these to a, a diameter of 0.4997, and I was able to get down to 0.4995 plus or minus two tenths. So it's pretty accurate for the, what I was doing. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the system is time consuming to set up. Most of that's just due to my inexperience. I'm not, not only learning the software for the Tormac, but I'm also learning Fusion 360. And Fusion 360 was needed for this project. This was too complicated of a piece to do the G-code uh, in con conversational programming. I needed to use the, the uh, Fusion 360 to design the, the piece and then generate the G-code. But doing that, it actually worked quite nicely. But just, it was time consuming. It wouldn't be worth doing for one or two pieces, but for doing 100 like I do, uh, it worked out quite nicely. This is a nice machine for doing the parts and pieces that I do. I do a lot of small parts like this, and this is the uh, precise size that I need for doing this. So it worked out quite nicely. This concludes this video on production of these brass index bearings for the AccuSlice system. I machined about a hundred of these brass uh, bearings and uh, assembled about uh, probably about 30 or 40 of these indexing systems. So these are all set now to go to attach to my AccuSlice systems that I produce. The Tormac lathe worked quite nicely. Uh, I was quite happy with the precision. I got an error of, you know, better than uh, two tenths of a thousandth uh, variation in the uh, parts that I machined. So they came out quite accurate and Definitely uh, work quite nicely with the indexers that I assembled. So once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, as always, you know, please give us a call or drop us an email. We're always happy to hear from you.